Mm. Mm. Hey, howdy folks. Oh man, last week we had a hurricane. We had three days without power. We had to live on solar and we found out some things. And one of the things we found out we needed was more storage <laughs> yeah. and more batteries on the on my we'll call the barn system. And today, it just so happens, I have something in here. But this is this comes with two stories. So the first part of this is, yeah, it's a lithium iron phosphate battery. I don't know what it looks like or really anything about it just yet. You and I together can find out how much storage and what kind of battery and what kind of prices we've got here. Because all I do know is, uh, wow. Whoo. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, wait till you see this. <laughs> yeah, so one of the problems I have with the lithium batteries, the, the, you know, the low end or just like, you know, the power storage of lithium iron phosphate batteries. If you buy the low end ones, like I've got the, you know, the $200 models, whatever, uh, you, there's no way to tell how much energy is actually in them because you'll measure 12 and a half volts or whatever. It's like, Okay, uh, they will give out 12 volts until they're almost dead because that is the nature of lithium. But I can't tell, are they fully charged or are they charged 80%, 50%? You know, it was like, I don't really know because the batteries are tied in parallel to my system. So therefore it's like, you really don't know what is going on in that system. And it would be nice if you could monitor each battery, but anybody in some right mind is gonna tell you, well, that's gonna cost more. Also got a question, a shout out to everybody there. Uh, obviously last week, and I just talked to a, uh, I just talked to a fellow this morning, uh, eight days without power, whoo, you know, uh, what, after the hurricane, power goes off, you're at home, you're safe and sound, but what would be your priority? Uh, asking around different people had sort of different answers and I was kind of surprised. My own personal pro uh, priority was to have enough power to run everything I needed to run in the house, except the home AC unit. That would have been, yeah, that, that would take more than 6,000 watts to kick that bugger around. But uh, my main priority was to keep the refrigerator running, and that way we had cold drinks, we had a refrigerator going, and we didn't lose the food. The uh, you know very next thing to that, of course, was TV, uh, the monitors for the computers, you know that kind of stuff, and uh, of course a cooling fan to help keep us cool, and our internet. Because my internet is also it's on T-Mobile system with uh, you know so it was like all I had to do was power it up. If I can give it power, which was like 18 watts or something, it'll run all day and night, and I can have internet. So those were the priorities, I guess you could say. But the number one priority was that refrigerator. Everything after that was kind of like, you know, a little icing on the cake, as they say. Now, this battery here came in from a really nice bunch over there, and I've had stuff in from them before, and they always send interesting products with new twists or, you know, really cool things. And the, the website is called banggood.com, and they have what I like to call, well, they're, they're called flash sales. When they have a flash sale, you can grab something that normally you might not buy at a great discounted price for you know a couple of days flash sale or something. So we'll have a link in the description below and maybe, I don't know if uh, Banggood will give us a coupon or anything, but I've got to say thank you again over to Banggood for sending just a, this is gonna be an interesting product and I'll tell you why. It has a uh, digital readout on the top of it and it's a solar battery like the ones I've had, but not like, not like what I've got. So, yeah, this is going to really add to the system. So let's see if we can get it out of the box. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, there it is. No, I got it out of the box, but uh, they really went back. <laughs> they packaged this thing really well. Golly, I have to. I guess I'm gonna have to cut my way into it, just don't take out the battery with you. Yeah, Let's see if we can bust this out of here. There we go, yeah, yeah. All right, now we got a battery back. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trashing the place today, I'll tell you. Now, what to see, 12 volt, 100 amp hour, or 1200 watt hour, depending on how you wanna look at that. And it's, of course, iron, you know, it's a lithium iron phosphate at a fantastic price. 
But this battery here has got something that I, I guess I wish all my batteries had. And this is from Banggood. And look at this thing. Yep, this is digital. Oh, I broke it already. <laughs> digital read off the top here. So we're going to take a good look at that too. But this is from a great price. So let's see if we can't, uh, we'll power this up or we'll, you know, they got a little button here. Whoa, okay, here we are. And it's at 13.1 volt. And it's at, I guess it says, I'll have to get some glasses on, but it looks like 70% charge. Again, see, that would be awesome if all my batteries were like that because, you know, I could just, here we are, you know, push the button. Yeah, 70% charge, 31.1 uh, volts, and that's it. I mean, this is, I guess all the lithium batteries, it would be nice to have them because that's just a feature that you really, especially if you tie them in series or parallel, it would be really nice to know what's going on in each individual battery. And the ones I've got out there right now are like, they're mystery lugs. You don't know, you know, overall, uh, I usually get the system up to when it fully hits the top, it'll peek out on my control package and show 14.4 volts, which tells me all the batteries are fully charged. But, you know, when I uh, ran the refrigerator and I started running the batteries down, and then of course I put them back on, took the refrigerator off that, went to my other system, but it was like, okay, now I don't know where they're at. I have no idea. They, they could be uh, 30%, they could be like, you know, eh, this far away from being dead. Uh, you, you know, there was just no way to know. Uh, Voltage-wise, it was still showing 12.1 uh, volts, which from what the industry tells me, that doesn't mean anything because they'll do that uh, all the way almost to the bottom. You know, it's when you hit the bottom, that you'll start to see that all of a sudden it'll just drop off, you know, <laughs> yeah. and the bad news. <laughs> yeah. So I'll just, um, I'll bring the camera over. I'll take a close look at this so you guys can take a really good look at what's on the top of this battery. But the first thing is, is I'm going to tell you right now, you can't wait to see the price. You just can't because this is, this battery here is the same price as everything else I've got. But the big difference, it has that feature. It also has the BMS, and you know, we, we're gonna look at all that anyways, and the cycle times and whatever, but that, to me, is gold, because that is what I need. That, that's a, you know, every individual battery in my system with that on it could tell me exactly what state that battery's in really quickly, and I'd know if there's a problem. Yeah, look at that. Built right into the top of the battery is a little digital readout here, and we'll just hit it with a nice little, pretty little blue light. 13.1 volt, which that's great. That's, you know, means it's, it's charged up a lot. It's not fully charged. 70% and it's even got a little picture of a battery showing you that, oops, that it's not quite full. That is fantastic. I love the fact that that's built into it. That is so cool. Now, when I come back, we'll talk about the rest of the numbers, the, you know, cycle charge and all that other good stuff. Okay, so we're gonna measure it because everybody always seems to like to ask that question. How big is it, you know? And the top, uh, kind of overhangs the rest of the battery. So I guess we'll go on the, the total outside top is 13 and a quarter. It's a little bit bigger than, yeah. And actually, if, in fact, if you want to go here, it's going to be, oh wow, about 12 and three quarter. So yeah, there you go. Uh, this has added almost a half inch to it. So this is 13 and, th 13 and a quarter. Uh, depth wise, seven and a quarter. And the height, and we'll just go to the top of the bolts because it has, that's kind of like relative to the way that's going to work, but uh, it's about nine and a quarter. So you'd have to have at least nine and a half or something deeper to miss. So you just don't make any you know, contact with the bolts or whatever. The bolts were already in here, which is unusual. This was shipped with the bolts in it. Usually they're in a little bag and you got to run around and look for them or something. So that's that's fine. That's cool. You know, and again, it has the removable strap if you don't like this uh, strap in your face thing or whatever. And again, I, it doesn't bother me, especially when you can pull them down like that and it'll keep the strap tight and pulled out of the way anyways on the battery so it's like you know fantastic now you're looking at anywhere from 3500 to 5000 cycle average for a you know for a battery of this type anyway so there's really no specific specs that will really worry me uh, in a something like situation you know like this the big difference this LED <laughs> man that makes this thing awesome but uh, it's big. It's bigger than my Group 24, as you, as I just measured it. So it is a little bit bigger than a Group 24 battery. It's more like a Group 30, I think they call it 31 or 32, something like that. But it's a little bit bigger battery, you know. 
for its size. And bigger is actually a lot of times I'm kind of happy with that because uh, they keep trying to make things smaller and smaller somehow and still have the 100 amp, you know, amp hour system or something with it. Let's talk about, real quick, uh, obviously trolling motors, RVs, camping of any sort, uh, you know, good battery situation for that. Also, uh, home solar packages or from small home uh, systems like mine or to even larger systems where you're building these things up. So one of the reasons I went in this direction was because I wanted to be able to add, you know, two of these on a system and then add four and then add, you know, two more and have six and eight and ten and you know, eventually down the road, whatever, but have a lot of these in line with the system so I can, you know, have a tremendous amount of storage capacity. Uh, one problem I do have with solar is that uh, a lot of days are sunny and you sit there and you think, I could be storing that power right now and I have no place for it because my system's full. <laughs> or in this case today, for example, it's a great day. Right now, my system is maxed out. It's full. The sun's shining. It's, it's perfectly afternoon time when, you know, the, the panels could be just banging something like this up and charging. And I have no place for that electric, electricity to go because all my batteries are full. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so one of the things that uh, makes this battery stand out a little bit more is the cycle times. Now, it starts rated at 4,000 and go up to, they say, 15,000. So we'll use the 4,000 number. Like I said, average on these is usually around 3,500. So 4,000 is better, it's good, yeah. And if it can go up to 15,000 cycles, wow, that's a lot. Now, a big, I gotta talk about this LED because it's not just what you saw, okay? There's a uh, menu in here and you can set this. So you can actually set it uh, for an alarm. So if you're having, if it's getting too low and you want to set an alarm on there for it to, for the battery to you know, tell you that there's a problem, you can do that. You can also set the voltage using this uh, control with the LED screen. So those are cool things. Plus you can tell of course the percentage of how much is filling up as you saw and the voltage that's applied that's ready here at the terminals. So it has a lot of functionality that little LED has a lot of functions in it, which is, like I said, it's a, it's like the next step from a basic battery when you're going up to something with some features that's more like a professional setup. This is cool because now you've got some stuff that allows you to monitor each. Say you have six of these or something, you can monitor these things. You know, uh, for some reason their site says in parallel or series up to four, and I'm not sure why that is. There might be something to that that I'm missing because. From what I understand, a lot of people will buy these and they will go eight and 10 or something, but I, you know, again, I don't know. I'm planning right now on uh, maxing out at four. That's as high as I want to go with my system at this time. Uh, and that's going to be 12 volt parallel, but uh, they also have higher, higher voltage batteries, by, by the way, that are available with, you know, features like that in it. So, uh, Banggood, I cannot thank you enough for sending this over to us because this is so cool. And Banggood uh, will have a flash sale and we'll have a, maybe a coupon or something with it. So if there is no coupon, check back with the video later and check the description about down below because there could be a coupon shows up later. A lot of times they do, sometimes they don't. Or they'll alert me at some point in a few weeks from now or something and say, oh, by the way, post this link on there now because we now have a, a sale deal or a flash sale or something going on with it. And they're like, oh, okay. So it's always good to check back with us. I try to get people to do that and I don't think some people realize how important it is to, you know, if they're thinking about buying but they want to save a few more dollars if they can, wait a week or something, check back, and, you know, watch the video, check it out, go down to the bottom, you know, like, and, and, and just see, you know, is, is there a sale on this thing? Yet? And sometimes there is, you know. I also post it in the comments but a lot of people, again, don't seem to read those comments. I'll even get a question, you know, two comments later. When is it going to be on sale? <laughs> so, awesome battery, awesome size. It's uh, 26 pounds, so she's a little heavier for what she is than some. Still does, you know, 26 pounds. A lot of them seem to run around that 21, 22 pound, and 26 pounds tells me there's more gobbledygook goodies in here that you're paying for. So. Yeah, you're paying a little bit more for this battery than say some of the cheapest ones out there. Forget about the cheapest ones out there. This this LED is making my day, I'll tell you. <laughs> because now I can monitor this battery. And, I, and if I had a bunch of these, I could monitor every one of them to see how they're doing to make sure that my system is working right. Because that's, 
yeah, when it comes to a hurricane, that is not the time you want to find out whether your system can handle, you know, a AC or refrigerators or whatever you're trying to run because that's what I did. I found out and doing some shifting around where we I was able to, you know, quickly clean up the mess and, and figure out a way to get around some of the problems I was having. Uh, and the biggest problem too was uh, recharge time. Um, again, these are, you know, four to six hours average for these things. There's no uh, secret to that. It's a matter of having enough wattage behind you through solar, whatever, to charge these back up. And that's something that's just, uh, you know, was it the nature of the beast at this point? So it would be nice if they had a, a higher speed way of charging. Uh, like the formulas, if you do the math formula, the 400 watt panel will charge one of these in, you know, four or six hours. I wish they would allow more power in as far as recharge go, but I understand that the technology would, it creates problems. Uh, unusual heat which creates uh, problems that can cause damage inside the battery and then you lose the battery instead, instead of uh, you know yeah having that 4,000 cycle all of a sudden you've destroyed the battery so I understand all that I just wish there was a way that the technology is, is getting better hopefully they'll get around some of that and they'll have higher speed because uh, in four to six hours we were running out of uh, our power stations were running down and in so four or six hours I had to get another power station out on the system to charge and that four or six hours I've got another power station running out of, out of juice and of course nighttime's coming which means I can't do anything I have nothing and nighttime that's when something like this whew, that really stood out because these were able to carry what I needed overnight and I even I saw this okay and I'm not gonna I would not do it I, I'm just scared. I guess I wouldn't do it. But <laughs> a fella ran a uh, standard American style fridge. Uh, it was an upright, like what I have, with the two doors, you know, the whole nine yards there. And he ran it overnight. Uh, I think it was eight o'clock at night till eight in the morning, something like that. 12 hours on a 100 amp hour battery, one battery on his 12 volt system. I wouldn't even attempt that, you know, that was, that's like, whoa, you know, like I have three batteries backed up in my system. So I knew because of his testing that it was like, oh, three of these, pff, we can carry that fridge from, you know, eight o'clock at night until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. There won't be a problem. But at some point I have to stop, switch over to my other system and allow that three battery bank system to build back up, which it did. By seven, eight o'clock at night, it had topped itself off, so we were ready to go back to the fridge again. Uh, I've got 10 power stations. Some of them are 2,000 watt power stations. Those were able to look after the TV, cooling fan, internet, uh, something else I'm missing. I just know it. Charging computers, running computers. We also tried running a computer and a printer uh, because I have a 3D printing farm and I need to get some stuff out. And that was a disaster. I am still not sure. I'm very unclear as to what happened, but when the printer started up, the power station shut off and I lost the label. Yeah, and uh, ended up having to make the label over again. And it was a bit of a disaster because it was, uh, you know, it just, it sent a note to the client saying that the, sh the shipment had been made and it was like, no, it isn't. I've got to remake the label now because something happened. And uh, we ended up waiting for the power to come back on so we could be absolutely 100% sure that we could make those labels and not send something to the client and say, oh, your, your items, your packages are being shipped. And it's like, no, they're not. <laughs> yeah, not good. You know? So this, I guess the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this out to my system and we'll hook it up and we'll put it, I'll have to remove some batteries or something, bank this thing up and see how it does. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking at the control package uh, and see how many volts is coming in. And then we'll take a look at this and sort of see how it's doing as far as, you know, charging up goes kind of thing. It's going to be pretty cool. So let's go out to the barn with this thing and put it on a solar system package. Solar power. Every time I say solar system, I keep seeing these planets flying around. Mm. Let's get out to the solar package and see what this is doing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're wired in and we've got the, I had to actually move the cables a little bit so we get to the LED screen here, readout. But let's see if we can get the readout here now. And... You can see what it is there. It's uh, about 30, 70, what have got, 75% at 13.3 right now. Uh, now, the control package up here is 
about 13.3. That's, it's late, yeah, 13.3. It's really late in the day, so I'm not getting a whole lot of solar in. So I don't expect this battery to even be full tonight by the looks of it, but uh, there it is there on the system, and it's, uh, there was one little uh, problem or caveat. I put it in parallel with the rest of the systems. So what happened was when I put it in parallel, the uh, it jumped from 70% charge to 75% because obviously it's reading the other batteries. That's not necessarily very a great thing, but that's okay. I mean, I can still live with that. In fact, it's kind of good because I can look at this battery and it'll tell me really overall the three batteries at this point, it'll tell me what they're doing. You know, like where we're at, we're, we're floating at 75% and we're floating at 13 points. Oh, okay, you know, I, I can sort of get a bite on what's going on. And that's what I like. I like to be able to see into this. This is kind of like those expensive server ones if you've ever seen those and they cost, you know, $1,200, $1,500 sort of thing. And this one here, it isn't priced like that. That's what I guess excites me. Okay, let's go back to the uh, shop. Well, I had it in parallel for a bit, charged it up, brought it back over here to the shop because uh, we're not we're not finished yet. But we also got to talk about something else. It's it's in a, every almost every one of these anyways. But yeah, she has BMS, and if you don't know what BMS is, it's battery management system, and it controls things like uh, charge and discharge. It you know it it controls that. It also uh, keeps you from short circuit safety problems, that sort of thing, and it'll shut the battery down basically, you know, so that we don't burn the place down. I hope not. And uh, also temperature, too high, too low, again, BMS. So you have battery management built into these, which is really cool, besides the uh, really cool LED. <laughs> but, uh, now, uh, we had a hurricane last week, and this thing uh, ended up underneath, yeah, two feet of salt water. So abandoned. Uh, the guy just said, you know, it's it's garbage, it's junk, it may as well go to the dump kind of thing. So anyways, so I brought it back and at some point in the future, I'll try to, you know, next few weeks, whatever, I'll try to get a show together to show you exactly how to uh, restore or save something uh, as cool as this, you know, fender amplifier that was completely dunked in salt water for, you know, a day or so before it was rescued. It was like, i show you how to fix it. Mm-hmm, yeah, or how we can try to fix it, I guess. Uh, this here came from a yard sale this past weekend, and it's a 2,000 watt, which is a little high for just a single battery like this. Normally, something like this, you should probably have it on about, you know, two batteries or more, because it's 2,000 watt. With a 4,000 watt surge, again, picked it up for a couple bucks, we'll turn it on, and see if she fires up. Yeah, lights on, yep, good. Power's on, cool, and, uh, Let's see, I'm just gonna hit the, see if I can read the voltage off here. Okay, it's 13.3 and I'm at 75%. I, I didn't fully charge this up, actually should have, but I didn't not quite get it all, all the way up. That's fine, it's, it's gonna be fine. Usually they like to be around 80% charged before you have to use them or something. So you can get away with it at that point. And that's another thing which, with a lead acid batteries and stuff, you just don't wanna go there. But with a lithium, Iron phosphate like this, you can get away with a little bit of, you know, yeah, some wiggle room. Let's turn this thing on for a second. And you see the power light comes on, and we are, yep, we are good to go. All right. Uh, I'll just shut that back off for now because we don't have any speakers attached to it or anything. I just got the control board sitting here with the buttons. But the that would not work up until, uh, I guess it was yesterday when I finally did the final stage of uh, getting the salt water destruction out of that thing <laughs> but uh we're running this thing down and let's see we've got this on now i checked this this pulls about 1.9 amps when it's just sitting like this with no load technically no i'm plugging just to show you but there's no load on it right now <coughs> there was <coughs> no what it is is uh yeah it's still on yeah okay it'll pull about almost two amps and that's quite a bit of power to be pulling if you're not doing anything. Now, what does that actually equate to? In 12 volt management for like solar, that should equate to about 24 watts being used by this, doing nothing. <laughs> and I'm just gonna pull the management up here again. It's still a 75. This is not even moving yet. You'd have to do a lot more than that. You'd have to put some serious load on it or something. But I just wanted to show you, and yeah, by the way, uh, I didn't do this, but uh, yeah, he's got this all connected up kind of nice on a heavy piece of cable, but 
Uh, here's the problem when you get into solar systems, uh, solar power systems like this, is uh, this guy's put, looks like, I guess a set of jumper cables on here. And I really don't know what the size of this wire is, but the, the current is probably, or could easily outrun this. And I'll tell you why. At 2,000 watts plus the surge for 4,000, technically this thing could pull as much as 182 amps. Whoa, that's way too much power. And this one here, the battery itself, is only going to allow up to 100 amps to go out of there. So at least you wouldn't, you know, you would, you may choke this thing off a little bit. You wouldn't choke the battery necessarily or damage it, but the battery would get hot and go downhill pretty quick, you know, at 100 amps. And again, 100 amps, that's a lot of power going out at 12 volt. Oh, 1200 watts. Yeah, you know, if you do the math, uh, it, these things can get pretty crazy pretty quickly. I'm going to shut it off and yeah, it lights off. Okay. And we'll just take these two, uh, <clears throat> take this off. It's kind of a emergency power system or something is what he had rigged up. He did use it for the hurricane and then he was moving and decided for whatever reason that he didn't need this anymore. So I guess where he was moving there would be no hurricanes. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, back to this. Banggood. The flash sale possibly. This is where to find this battery. Yes. And find a deal on it. Absolutely. Yeah. So links will be in the description down below for this guy because this is this is a nice one. I, I wish I had like, you know, man, I wish I had a truckload of these things backed up. I, I could have run the whole house off these things. But wow. Yeah. And I love the that LED. So anyways, again, thank you Banggoods for sending this over to us. I love it. It is really, it is the nicest battery we've ever had in here. It is the best of this type of battery. This is the best one I've ever seen in the business because it has that. And that to me is, is huge because it means I can monitor what's going on. So anyways, got to get out of here. A few weeks from now, we'll come back to this and I'll explain to you how to try to uh, uh, rescue electronic stuff like that guitar amplifier that was, you know, in salt water. Yeah, can that be done? I just did it this week, so there you go. Uh, meantime, I gotta get out of here, and uh, thank you for watching Copy Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell, and uh, over and out.